welcome back to this thing. Today we're gonna be going over how I sauce up music videos, adding speed ramping and panning crop. It really helps with the flow of your edit and kind of make the music video clips transition a lot easier and just the flow of the overall edit. I've been getting a bunch of requests on specific directors and editors and how they do their panning crop and speed ramping. So I'm just gonna be going over general concepts that are pretty popular right now on how to do pan and crop and speed ramp and to level up your music videos. If you're new here, what's good? My name's Brian, I make music video tutorials here on YouTube. And if you're not already subscribed, go ahead and do that. I upload three times a week and we're on the road to 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year. Also, one last thing before we get into the video, if you wanna level up your music video editing game and support the channel at the same time, you can go over to my website and check out my packs and presets. I'll have them linked down below as well as a playlist of tutorials that I have on the packs and presets. But yeah, that's enough talking. Let's get into the video and break on this effect. All right, so now that we're in Premiere, I'm gonna be showing you three clips where there's no speed ramping, and then I'm gonna be showing you the same exact three clips with some speed ramping and kind of cut to the beat. So you can see I have an audio track here. It's a beat from my friend Quentin. You can go ahead and check him out. I'll have him linked down below. Also, this music video footage that I'm using is from Love Letter by Scory. Nicholas Jandora directed it, so I just wanted to give a shout out to everyone that worked on the project. I'll have the music video linked down below as well as Nicholas. So here's the clip just playing over the music with no like direct cuts or speed ramping or pen and crop or anything. And you can see the clips look really good. There's nothing wrong with them, but I'm just gonna be showing you how to add a little bit more life and add it to the beat. So now you can see here is what the footage looks like when there's speed ramp, pan and crop, all that stuff to kind of make the flow of the edit seem a little bit better. And that's a really short example. Obviously it's only three clips long, but you get the idea of how you can combine these techniques and add them into your music videos to make it flow better and also just make it a little bit more interesting. So first off, all you wanna do is just find some clips that you wanna add speed ramping and pen and crop to. Now let's go ahead and start with this first clip right here. And the first step I always do is right click, go to speed and duration, and then change the time interpolation to optical flow. That's just gonna make it a lot smoother when you slow it down and when you speed it up, it's gonna blend the frames a lot better. And then if you wanted to do some very basic speed changes, you can go and change the speed. If you wanted to make it double as fast, you can make it 200%. Or if you wanted to make it half as fast, you can make it 50% and so on. I'm gonna leave it at 100 for now. And also if you wanted to reverse the clip, so have it play in reverse, you can click reverse speed and it's gonna do that. But for right now and for the tutorial, we don't wanna do any of that. So I'm gonna click okay after we've changed the optical flow. Then if your timeline doesn't look like this, it probably looks something like this and the clips are really small. I always recommend when we're doing this, drag that layer, the video layer that your clips are on up a little bit so you can see it a little bit better and it's gonna help with the graph editing. And then go ahead and right click on where it says this effects box. You can see here, if I zoom in a lot more, you'll be able to see it. It says FX, it's in the top left of your clip all the time. And then go ahead and right click on it, go to time remapping and then click speed. And it's gonna change your clip to look like this. And you're not gonna be able to see the footage itself anymore. Then before we go ahead and do any ramping, you can do the similar thing that we just did with the speed ramping, but with the bar here, if you wanted to speed it up, you can drag the bar up. You can see that number at the bottom of the clip it says 200%, so it's gonna be double as fast. Or you could go ahead and drag it down and that's gonna slow it down. When you're working with 24 frames per second clips or 30 frames per second clips, I wouldn't recommend going anywhere below 80%. It's all depending on what FPS you shoot in. So if you have 60 frames per second clips or 120, you're gonna be able to slow it down a lot more than 80%. But roughly for 24 to 30 frames, I always stick right around 80 is the lowest I'll go. And then for as fast as you want, you could pretty much do whatever. It doesn't matter too much about the frames per second for that. But yeah, now going into adding ramps and making the transitions and the speed changes a lot smoother, what you're gonna wanna do is find a spot where you kinda want it to start and where you want it to end. So I want it to come in fast here and then kinda slow down right where he kinda puts his hand out. So let's go ahead and click P on our keyboard or go to the pen tool on your toolbar. And if you click on the line, it's gonna add a point. So then what I'm gonna go ahead and do is on the left-hand side of the bar, since I want it to go fast here, I'm gonna drag it up to 200%. And then if you can see on this bar, there's like a left and right arrow. If you click on the left-hand side and drag it out, it's gonna make the graph diagonal now. So before it was playing at 200 speed all the way up until this frame right here, and then it goes to normal speed. But if you go ahead and drag this out, it's gonna be at like 200 and then slowly slow down to 100%. And then if you click on the marker again, you can see it brings up these options where you can click and kind of drag, and that's gonna ease the ramp a little bit more. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that just a little bit so it looks a little smoother. And let's go ahead and render that out. And then since it has optical flow on it, you're probably gonna to need to render it out every single time you tweak something. And that's just because it's gonna make it look a lot smoother. If you don't render it out, it's gonna be choppy and you're not gonna see what it's actually looking like. So now when we play it, you can see it goes fast and then slows down. 
Now let's go ahead and once it gets to this part, slow it down to 80% instead of 100. So I'm just dragging the bar down at this part and you can see it brings the bar red again. And then let's find a spot where we want it to speed back up. Kind of right where he swings his arm is where I'm gonna add it back to fast again. So let's go ahead and go right here. Go ahead and press P on your keyboard. And then again, dragging that up to 200%. Or whatever percent you really want, you can go faster, you can go slower, but that's just what I'm working with right now. And then dragging that bar out and then clicking and dragging to make it look a little smoother like that. And then if you ever see this spot on your bar where it's like checkered board or missing, that basically means that it ran out of frames because you made it too fast. So what I do is I just drag it till you don't see that anymore and it should fix the issue. And honestly, it's not even really that noticeable, but it does really help the flow of your edit a lot when you combine it with other clips. So let's go ahead and do this to the second clip and kind of transition into it. So again, go ahead and right click, go to speed and duration and change that to optical flow and click okay. And then again, click on the FX box, right click on it, go to time remapping and then speed. And since this clip ended off going fast, let's go ahead and start off this clip going fast. So it kind of ramps together. And let's go ahead and wait till he points at the camera, like right there, to have it slow down. Let's go ahead and add a point there. And then I'm gonna match the exact same speed. So I'm gonna bring it up to 200%, just how the last clip was. And then dragging that out again, and then ramping it. And you kind of just wanna match the ramp so it's smooth. As you can see, it looks like a smooth hump now instead of like before it goes up and then just harsh down. The smoother you can make these ramps, the more fluid the transition's gonna look and the effect's gonna look. And then we can have it slow down right where he points. So let's go ahead and bring it to maybe 85% this time. And then maybe right at the end when he starts dragging down his hand. So right there, I'm gonna add a point and then drag it up to 200%, drag it out and make that ramp. This one's gonna be a little bit harsher at the end, but it'll still work. And I really like the way that clip looks. One thing you can do to really add the effect in is add some pen and crop. But before we do that, let's go ahead and add that beat back in. That way we can kind of edit to the beat and make it look really good. So normally you do want to cut your music video to the beat of the song, but sometimes you don't need to cut exactly on every beat hit and everything to make it less robotic. I'm actually going to have the beat hit or the beat drop where he points at the camera. So right there is where I want the beat to drop. And that's right here. You can see that peak is where the beat drops. If I play it, you can see it's a little off. So let's go ahead and drag that over here. That's looking really good. If we add some zoom in or some pan and crop, it's gonna help out a lot. So to do that, I right click on the blank project area, go to new item and then click adjustment layer. I already have one made, so I'm just gonna drag it down above the clip and just make it as long as the second clip or whatever clip you want the pan and crop to be on. Then go to your effects tab and type in transform and go ahead and drag that onto the adjustment layer and then go to the effects controls tab. And the first thing you wanna do in transform is bring up the shutter angle. If you bring it up to 180, it's gonna look the most natural for the motion blur, and I'd recommend that. But if you want the motion blur to be a lot more apparent, you can bring it up to 360, or if you want it to be a little bit less noticeable of an effect, you can bring it below 180. But I always keep it right around 180. And then let's go ahead and have it zoom in where he points. But we don't want it to be too robotic, so it's just gonna zoom in maybe. So I'm gonna start it at 100% scale, three frames before the beat drops, and then let's go five frames to the right, or kind of right after he points at the camera and zoom it in to maybe something a little bit aggressive, maybe like 145. And I'm also going to go back to that first keyframe where it starts zooming in and keyframe the position and then go to where it finishes zooming in. And let's go ahead and move it up just a bit so it, he stays in the frame. Now, when you go ahead and render that, out, you can see it zooms in and it kind of hits on the beat. Let's go ahead and actually make that a little bit more aggressive. So instead of five frames total, let's go ahead and drag that like two frames to the right. So it's only like three frames total. Now it's gonna zoom in a lot more harsh. I really like the way that looks. One thing I like to do with the keyframes on the transform is highlight all of them, right click and go to temporal interpolation and then go to Bezier. And that's just gonna make it kind of like easy ease and kind of like what we did with these graphs to make it smoother. If you wanna go more in depth, you can actually click these arrows and play with the graphs but it is a little tricky 
in Premiere editing these graphs. So I normally stay away from that. If you guys want a more in-depth tutorial, let me know in the comments and I'll go over it. But for like 99% of the time, I don't even tweak the graphs and Bezier does the job. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like now. And you can hear in the beat, there's a snare right here. So I actually want it to go one extra frame. So to do that, I'm just gonna drag the speed a little bit slower in the slow motion and drag out that adjustment layer as well, just so it hits on the snare and trend and goes to the next clip. I'm also gonna go to this frame right here and keyframe the scale and scale out just a little bit, not all the way back to 100, but let's go to like 125. So it kind of transitions a little bit better. So it's gonna go from 145 to 125 there. Now you can see it kind of bumps out and just has a little bit more flow to it. I like to do things with the pan and crop at the same time you add the speed ramp. That way it kind of like sells the effect a little bit more and just has a little bit more flow and motion to it. The first clip, I'm not gonna really add any pan and crop to because I like the way it looks and like the framing of the clip and there's not really like anything you really need to emphasize on by zooming in. And then let's go ahead and add that third clip in. And like always do the same thing, speed and duration, go to optical flow, go ahead and click okay. Right click on the FX box, go to time remapping and then click speed. I want at this beat hit right here, I want him to be tapping his head for the first time. So let's go ahead and make a point where he's tapping his head. And then if you drag up the speed, you can see that that bar, that dotted bar now lines up with the beat cut. And it's actually at 200%, but it really doesn't matter. It just so happened to be at 200%, the percent we've been using the whole entire time, but it doesn't need to be at that percent. And I'll show you kind of what you can do if it's not in a second. So let's go ahead and drag that out kind of how we did before. And now if we go to that cut, it's actually not, his hand's not actually on his head yet. So if you go ahead and drag that percent even higher, something like 250, maybe a little bit higher. If you're staying on the frame where you want it to hit, you can go ahead and just keep on dragging it faster until it hits on that frame. And let's go ahead and smooth that out just a little bit. Let's go ahead and play that, see if that looks good. And I want it to be slow motion again when he's tapping on his head. So let's go ahead and make it, let's go ahead and make it 80%. And then maybe go around here. We start singing again and let's add another point and bring it up to 100%. And then if you want, you can go ahead and just slowly ramp that. That's what I'm gonna go ahead and do. This is not really that n noticeable. It's just gonna be 80% and then slowly go back up faster. Now let's just cut it where the beat's at. And then let's also go ahead and add another adjustment layer and do that same thing where it zooms in where he's tapping his head, just to add a little emphasis on some motions. I always like to do that with the panning crop where it has a little bit of emphasis on something that someone's doing. So let's go ahead and bring that shutter angle up back up to 180. And then again, go back like three-ish frames or so, and then keyframe the scale. And then go to whatever you want. Right there-ish looks good. And I'm gonna keyframe the position also, to its default spot at the beginning where before it starts zooming in. And then let's go ahead and frame them a little bit better. And I think that looks good. And then go ahead, highlight all those and go to Bezier. That's a little bit aggressive for me, actually. Let's go like five frames from that. And this one's gonna be a little bit smoother of one. And I'm really liking how that's looking, actually. It's adding a lot of motion and flow to the edit without actually doing too much work. It's pretty simple to do and you can replicate this throughout your music videos. With that being said, you don't always have to start off with it fast and go to slow motion and then go back fast. For example, here's the second clip with no speed ramping or anything. Let's go ahead and do that optical flow and then go to the time wrapping and go to speed. Let's go ahead and transition between this clip. So say, sometimes I see this as a technique that a lot of directors use is where they'll have it actually just have one clip that's like playing really fast. Let's go ahead and go 400 for right now. Drag that over here. Now you can see 
that in between these two clips, you almost use this clip as a transition where it speeds really fast. I'm not a super big fan of how it looks, but I know a lot of people do it. And if you do it properly, it can look good in videos. So go ahead and play that. I'll show you what that looks like. I'll go ahead and turn off the audio because it's not going to be synced anymore. And then go ahead and play it. You can see how it kind of transitions between the clips and it's fast. And sometimes it looks good. I think it looks pretty decent here, actually. But you can go ahead and do the same exact thing, actually, with the opposite. Say you wanted it to be B-roll and you wanted it to just be slow motion. You can make it 80% and then kind of cut on the beat again. Not that we're even having the audio on. But you can see now when you play that, it's going to be just a full slow motion clip of that. So changing the velocity of the clips and changing the speed of all the clips and adding pan and crop and adding all these digital zooms and stuff can really like upgrade your music video. And I think it's essential to add into some music videos. And it's a really good skill to have to kind of be able to tweak and change the flow of your edit. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much all I got for you guys in this one. If you made it all the way to the end, like always, I do appreciate you. If you haven't already, like, comment, subscribe, do all that YouTube stuff. If you want more tutorials like this one or more in depth, let me know in the comments down below. Follow me on all social medias. I'll have them linked down below. If you want to support the channel and also get some music video editing packs and presets, go ahead and check out my website, brianthelada.com. But yeah, that's pretty much all I got for you guys in this one. Peace.